Father Villarreal had the occasion to state that in its mission of being a seedbed of authentic Filipino social transformation, the university strives to essay the role of a change catalyst, facilitating the mobilization and convergence of various actors in social development. Interventions which the university may take in relation thereto are always with a view toward making social templates that can be replicated and multiplied, institutionalization as it were. So we are abundantly grateful for this continuing collaboration among us, our dear partners. Today's gathering is as we realize that the journey of poverty follows like a much low hierarchy of needs. Uh, it uh, and we'll explain to you. It really begins with these bases, they need uh, physical, a home, uh, security and safety, and then it moves to this area of relationship, esteem, love and belonging, and where we're still struggling is moving people to a future orientation. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's a journey, not just economic, it is a journey of personal and community transformation. And we realize that the external economic things like housing and livelihood and education have to go hand in hand with the transformation of values of the individual and the community. We need to come uh, your problems. Uh, uh, and so, in the beginning, it was not so easy to understand what Tony Melotto meant when he said that poverty is above all a loss of human dignity. Uh, we define it usually in economic terms, kulang ng kita, kulang ng era, kulang ng education, but he says there's a deeper poverty than that. The deeper poverty is the loss of human dignity. And the best illustration I have is that when we're talking with the nanites of our rags to riches, we're meeting with them, and in the beginning, they did not want to join, in our Reese will present him later, and eventually, tanong ka sa kanila, so wakas, bakit kayo sumama? Why did you follow? Kasi sabi nila, nagpursigi sila. They continue to come to our house. Then, the one that struck me, they said, bubasa sa bahay namin, nakikain sa amin, kahit hindi ba kami nagbubukhang tao. Uh, that was very powerful. Saying that they came to our house and ate with us, even though we didn't look quite human. These are scavengers. Uh, that was very striking. Uh, one of the things we realized is that the, uh, uh, words only go so far. You have to see examples. Uh, the other thing that we have realized is that it's very crucial to do continuing formation of values, family and community, very simple. It's very key with Gawad Kalina, but Rags to Riches does it also. Uh, Happy Noy, Happy Noy, as was pointed out to you, has two parts. One is the business, but the other one is the foundation which does continuing family formation. And it's very crucial for expansion and growth to new areas. All of these things have to have a face. You may be a big institution behind them, but the institution must have a face. And so you need the committed leaders. Uh, build halls, build classrooms, clinics, enterprises, full feeding. Uh, but leaders who above all understand that the development of values, the building of community and shared responsibility are key for stability in the future. It's not just the economic things. Okay. Um, so the role of Ateneo, GK, and otherwise. I think we'll have, our work will be for formation of values and building of community, uh, creating of volunteers, uh, to be kind of a hub, an honest broker for the different government agencies, businesses who want to help in an effective way, to be a hub for donors, connecting them with the greatest need. I think that's about what I have. It was very dear to me why I wanted to run. And that was what we learned in social enterprise, what we were doing with communities. We wanted to scale that up. We wanted more places in the Philippines to experience that type of support, the type of transformation, the type of change. And to be very honest, being part of the Ateneo, well, I don't know if I'm father, but Ateneo Connected Social Enterprise has proved to be very crucial for us. No? It, it helped us along the way. It guided us when um, we were down and out and uh, when Mark and I were experiencing many difficulties. Being connected to Ateneo was really a big help. No? But along the way, we knew that we had something. No? And of course, our small, I don't want to say mafia, Reese, no? our small family of social enterprises, which includes our friends from GK, Rags to Riches, God Heart, and so many other uh, social enterprises. We all learned from each other. And uh, Father Ben actually uh, got us to learn with each other through a Saturday course. And it was like we were taking up a, 
a master's course in uh, social enterprise. It really was very helpful to us. No? So when I ran in 2013, I knew what I wanted to do. It was very clear to me that what GK was experiencing, what Happy was experiencing, what Raps Riches was experiencing, needed to be in more places. Uh, hindi pwedeng dun lang sa aming communities or hindi pwedeng dun lang sa mga nanay na tutulungan namin. It had to grow and really scale up. And so that was really uh, where I was no, when I won finally in uh, 2013. And in fact, um, uh, the, the next laws that we passed, the, the, the current bills that we filed are all focused on trying to create that support structure for our SMEs and our social enterprises. These days though, this is my first law, and this basically creates the necessary infrastructure on the ground to be able to help our SMEs, our farmers groups, our social enterprises, to introduce inclusive supply chains, to introduce innovation, to introduce an aspect of design in the work of many of our fellow Filipinos. This was the first bill that we were able to pass, and this really takes up a lot of our time. And in my presentation, this is my presentation because this is our attempt at scaling up. Now, earlier, uh, during the, the presentation, no, there was a line there that inevitably, you will have to work with government if you want to scale up, inevitably. Uh, as if it's the last resort, no? But you go to government, you don't have choice. And that's partly true, because when we were in Hapinoy, in all of the years I was in Hapinoy, we never really worked with government, no? Same, same with Drugs to Riches, no? we never really worked with government. But at a certain point, you understand that if you really want this to really get to every single part of the Philippines, government needs to play a role. Uh, the best is that it becomes a role that is supportive and enabling, as uh, Mark said, an enabling environment. Uh, the minimum, you're not in the way of innovation and progress. And ang pinakaayaw natin, ikaw pa yung hindrance to progress. Diba? So minimum, uh, let the private sector and the social enterprises do their thing and grow on their own without becoming the, the hindrance in terms of compliance, in terms of permits, in terms of corruption. But the goal is to be that catalyst for that enabling environment. That at the end of the day, when entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, SMEs, farmers groups, cooperatives, etc., etc., when they go and seek help from government, ang pakiramdam nila, natulungan ako. You know, you are the wind beneath my wings and not uh, what drags me down to earth, no, Father. So, 